Say hello to the dreary before. 1,795,000 coats of glossy white paint over the last 50 years. It is time to give this bad boy some love with some drilling, some sanding, some sawing, some painting, and some crickety cricketing. Let's do it. I am just about to head over to the kids' school to start this makeover, and I'm so excited because our school is like the cutest little school you ever did see, but man, it is old, and it needs some major TLC, and I'm just so stoked that I get to give it some of that TLC and a little bit of a vibe. So I swear this was like a manifestation because I'd been wanting to tackle a couple of really fun makeover projects at the school, and then I got an email from Cricket freaking saying, hey, we're sponsoring classroom makeovers. Are you interested? And I was like... Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna tackle the first thing that they do when they walk in, which is go into this little cubby room, drop their backpacks, put their jackets down. It's the first thing you see when you walk into the classroom. So it really sets the tone. Like, I do not wanna do something that looks like a YouTuber just like puked rainbow all over it. You know, like something that makes for a good before and after video, but not so much for everyday actual life. I wanna do something that feels modern, it feels elevated, that can work year after year and be a space that they like going into every day and not not like only for one day and then they're like this is really a lot I'm gonna meet my buddy Ro who is gonna help me on a couple of the projects that I'm gonna tackle today today I officially start working on the kids classroom and look who I've got Rolando it's very exciting reunited and it feels so good mm, yeah whatever uh, see we're back <laughs> He's such a brat. All right, so first thing I did was just kind of go through the space with him and tell him what all of my plans were. I started off talking about this sort of coat wood section because I didn't know if we were gonna rip off the entire piece of wood and put something new, maybe do a wood veneer, no clue. Moved over to the cubbies, the cabinets, and then we just decided to get started. We tried to remove all of the coat hooks and I could not believe it, but it worked. A tip when you are trying to remove something is use your power drill, obviously in the reverse, but push against it as hard as you can. As long as long as you're pushing while in reverse, the screws will actually pull out and not strip. What was really cool is once some of the hooks came off, there were so many coats of paint that it literally just started taking the paint off with it. And we realized we could just scrape all of the paint right off it and just chip it away time after time. Once we got the majority of the paint off, I started sanding it. Whenever you're sanding something that has a stain like this, you wanna start with the lowest end grit. That's like the crunchiest grit sandpaper and it's gonna remove the most. Then you move up to the next and then up to the next until you get a smooth finish. But I think I started with like a 40, then I went to maybe a 90, then to a 120, then to a 320. Now, while I was doing that, Ro was taping off our big chalkboard section and then we headed to Home Depot. All right, we have come to Home Depot. We're going to get the trim for the chalk uh, chalkboard, you know, situation. Paint for, well, paint for everything pretty much, but especially the new kind of like gray ombre cubby section. Knobs. Am I forgetting anything? Trim. I said trim, trim Ro. Oh, trim. Freaking said trim. I swear, I can't believe it, but I somehow miss working with him. Okay, so we went and found our trim, and this was mainly to frame up the chalkboard wall. That way it looked like legit and not just a square painted on the wall. It's so bizarre to me still, but Home Depot just has a giant saw sitting there allowing you to cut them to size. So I cut two eight-foot pieces and two four-foot pieces, and that was going to ultimately become our frame. Once I got back, I also swapped out the cheap plastic hardware on these cabinets for a sleek, heavy-weighted black metal, which just made it look a little more uh, modern and cool. Now it was time for the chalkboard wall. Don't get freaked out. When you do it, it comes out navy blue, but it dries black. You're gonna need multiple coats of the chalkboard paint in order to make it really work. So just take your time with each coat, making sure that they're as even as possible. That way, as you build, it continues to stay really even. That was the end of day one. Now it is day two and coat two. This is Miss Caitlin. This is not gonna be a surprise for her. She's sort of seen it along the way because she's needed to be in the classroom, but that's okay. This is for them to enjoy. It's not for a big old surprise. All right, coat two is done. Now it was time to move on to the cubby and I'm basically giving the base a nice bright white coat, just touching up with the white paint, getting rid of the Sharpie numbers because I'm gonna do a really nice cool Cricut number for each cubby. While that was drying, I am doing my third coat of the chalkboard wall so it's gonna be ready to prime and for Ro to do some killer custom artwork. 
Now, my plan for the cubby was only to paint the pieces that divide it. I'm gonna leave the base white, keep these pieces gray, and then edge the front black so that it just has kind of a pop, but it's not so overbearing. There was a moment when I thought maybe I would do like a rainbow ombre cubby situation, and while that would make for a killer YouTube video, a great before and after, I thought, man, that could be like super annoying day after day, year after year, and get old really fast. So this will be clean, chic, and modern. Love it. You know what's really fun about painting 36 cubbies? Nothing. Nothing is fun about it. I'm sweating. I have paint everywhere. Paint everywhere. Everywhere. Paint everywhere. See, it's like we never left each other. <laughs> We're right back on the set of Home and Family. That's what you get, Ro. I forced him to get on his knees and paint with me. So we are just painting the entire thing. And while the gray is drying, the chalkboard was ready. So I peeled off my painter's tape. It's like the most perfect line ever. It's highly satisfying. And then you're going to prime it. I keep wanting to say you're gonna season it like a cast iron skillet, but you're gonna prime it. Just grab some chalk, cover the entire thing with the chalk, and then you're gonna kind of rub it in. This is gonna get it ready. That way when you erase your first piece of artwork, it's actually going to erase. So just kind of rub it clean. And now Ro is going to do his awesome custom piece of art. He's just gonna write second grade big. And on this wall, when it's done, this is where photos of the entire class are gonna go. I'm not gonna add those photos now because I don't wanna have all the kids on this video, but this whole thing will be even more of a focal point because you'll see each kid's face. But look at what Ro is doing. This is so satisfying and the end product is so freaking gorgeous. And look at how amazing this wood looks. You guys, it's like a piece of art in the room and even more special, the fact that it's original. I mean, this piece of wood must be like 50 years old. So it's so special to have brought it back to life. I'm just adding the hooks and we're good. Now, this is a really great tip if you're thinking about doing a black trim on something and you wanna know if it works. Use black electrical tape to tape it off and take a look at how you like it. If you like the way the tape looks, then you know you'll like the way the paint looks. So this is something great that you could actually do on like windows in your house, anywhere you're thinking of trim. I loved it, so I'm using my high gloss black paint and creating black edges throughout the entire cubby. I am home and now it's time to start doing all the Cricut projects to bring some actual color and life and organization to the little nook. First one I'm gonna do are the little circle numbers that'll go on the cubby. I just went over to shapes, added a circle, sized it to three inches, and then I added three and like lined them all up. Once I had one row, I copied and pasted until I had 36 of them. Now I added a number to the center of each one and first you wanna align them. So you're gonna highlight the circle and the number and click center horizontally, center vertically, and then the numbers will be centered. Next thing you're gonna do is highlight the number and the circle and go down to the bottom right and click slide. Slice. This is gonna actually slice the number out of the circle so that when this goes on my cubby, I'm gonna end up with a black circle with the number cut out, which will be white from the wood underneath it. And you can see what it'll end up looking like. Next, I click make it. I've got a 12 by 24 inch mat, so I'm able to fit about 21 numbers on each mat and I let it cut. So I start off by weeding out the numbers in the middle because again, I want that to shine through. The white glossy wood is gonna shine through it. I peel the rest of it and I grab my transfer tape. Anytime you're doing a large piece like this, you kind of want to use the transfer tape like you do contact paper, where you really only peel the top part and then kind of pull the protective backing as you go, sort of pulling it down as you go. Again, always with vinyl, you do transfer tape, you do the little squeegee situation. Once you've done that to the whole thing, you're gonna peel it off the mat. And generally with something big like this, you're actually gonna flip it upside down to peel it, and I'll show you that. I also wanted to create these words to put right on the cabinets that have our new black handles. Something really understated right at the eye line of the kids so that they could see these very important, very valuable words, little reminders to them. Now I was at the school and I'm cutting right along the very bottom of the edge because I had an idea of how I could guarantee that these are all level and even all the way across that hallway. What I'm doing is I'm actually taking my painter's tape and I'm lining it right up against the bottom edge. That will make sure that not only, not only am I level, but it's one inch up. So now all I need to do is take my word, line it right up against the edge of the tape. I'm guaranteed to be level because it's being leveled off the tape and I'm guaranteed to be one inch up because it's being one inch up off the tape. So these are good hacks for you guys to do for projects around your own house. Use things like this, tape to create kind of blocks and level 
And now it's time to add the numbers to the wood. I decided to do smaller numbers, that way it stayed understated and the wood could be the focal point, but previously they were just like written with Sharpie. So this is looking really good, nice and crisp. You know the deal, squeegee them on, transfer them on, and peel, you're good to go. Same thing here. In order to make sure that the numbers are all level, I'm putting my painter's tape right along the edge. Now I'm taking my number and I'm butting it right up against the edge of my painter's tape. That way, again, I am going to be one inch in on all of them straight across the board, super even. When you're doing large projects like this, I recommend working as like a conveyor belt. First do all the tape, then lay down all the numbers, then squeegee all the numbers, then peel all the numbers. It'll work much faster if you kind of do everything in phases. I was texting with Miss Caitlin and she sent me this steam graphic and I thought this would make for an amazing like oversized Cricut wall mural right above the coat hooks. I needed a little bit of help because I'd never made anything that big before. So I reached out to my friend Ashley who has a sick Etsy shop and knows everything there is to know about Cricut. She not only walked me through how to do this, but actually made this, what you're looking at right now, made it and shared the design file with me. What it is, is all these different gears based off the sizes I gave her. Each gear has three colors, a back, which is black, a slightly smaller one, which is gray, and then a slightly smaller one in the color. She showed me how to actually do an off the mat project, which is when you have something that's larger than the 12 inch mat. So this is what you're gonna do. Her, her cardstock is eight and a half by 11. So she added in a shape of a rectangle, made it eight and a half by 11, and is lining them up to cover the entire gear. So basically this is like a gear covered up in eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. Now, just the same as I did the slice button to cut the numbers out of the circles, she's doing the slice button to cut the gears out of the paper. Now, these are different pieces of paper that will cut and eventually come together to create a giant 24 inch gear. So as you can see, she's clicking each piece of eight and a half by 11 paper, clicking slice, and this is what it looks like. Once they print, I will be able to tape together that gear. So once she sent me that file, I then started creating text that was gonna be sized appropriately to each gear and kind of curved and laid out like I wanted. She sent me these pieces and here they are. You can see how cool they look. It's so awesome. So for anything that was around 12 inches or smaller, it was cut as one piece. So you can see what I'm doing is taking those little 3D foam squares to connect them. That way there's like a slight lift. I wanted it to feel a little three dimensional. The gears each get slightly smaller so that there's like a shadow effect so that there's a nice pop. Here is that off the mat project. You can see it looks exactly like when she did it off the mat on the Cricut Design Space and all I had to do was tape it all together. And then you're just gonna stack it up. You're gonna do it for all of them. Now for these much bigger ones, I thought it made more sense to just get some foam core and make some foam core squares go much, much faster than using those tiny, tiny little foam squares and it was gonna save a lot of money. So I did a bunch of one inch ones all the way around, then a big fatty in the middle and I did that for each layer. Again, this is gonna create my three dimensional shape and the off the map project that Ashley helped me with. And the last thing I had to do was just add all of the relevant words on each of the gears. So I printed them all out, you know the deal, transfer tape, squeegee, peel it off the mat, cut them, transfer them, and then put them directly onto the cardstock. A really great tip, by the way, is always save your transfer tape. It works for more than one use, so not only can you save it in each individual project, but you can save it over time. There, you can see the way it looks, nice and popped, and I headed over to the school to actually attach them to each of the gears. So you can either use the foam squares or the little ones that I cut. You can cut into even smaller pieces. It definitely moves faster doing that with a little bit of hot glue. Highly recommended over spending the money on the little guys. Now, I just put glue dots on the back of all of this. So I put glue dots, I found my center for my big 24 inch guy, press that into place. And then I just started kind of eyeballing, uh, not only eyeballing distance, but eyeballing slope. I wanted these to be again, more in the eye line of the kids. So I sloped it down, finished it. And guys, we are done. Here is that old space, bland white. Take a look at our new colorful space for the whole class to enjoy.